السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرة ما ما بعد last last hadith from last night was the last one from the from the book of taqwa now we having a new book or a new chapter in Riyadh al-Salihin Imam al-Nawi رحمه الله تعالى starting with can you guess what could it be the chapter Imam al-Nawi would would speak about after finishing talking about taqwa before taqwa if you guys remember when we talk about taqwa al-muraqaba so that the kind of like observation the self conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your life and then you have taqwa and then what would, what could come after taqwa Refraining from haram, sabr, okay, purification. Actually, it is al yaqeen wa tawakkul that you put your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal and have a lot of certainty in that. After you, you have, so of course, now you you trust Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the boundaries that He set for you, right? Why would you need to observe these rules anyway? If Allah says this is haram, why would He say it's haram? Because definitely it's something that's not going to be good for you. If Allah said do this, then you know that it's beneficial to you. Why would you even Why would you even trust that? Because you have tawakkul and you have yaqeen. You have you have no doubt. You have full certainty of Allah subhanahu wa taala in regard to His judgment, in regard to His hikmah, to His wisdom, to His rules, and then you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa taala. That's the chapter that he's talking about here. Babu al-yaqeen wa tawakkul a firm belief and perfect reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال الله عز وجل ولما رأى المؤمنون الأحزاب قالوا هذا ما وعد الله ورسوله وصدق الله ورسوله وما زادهم إلا إيمانا وتسليما and when the believers saw الأحزاب you know remember the Ahzab the confederates who came from all around the Arabian Peninsula and surrounding Medina to Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم to eradicate the believers once, once and for all when, the, when this gathering was like something that they never heard of before in the Arabian Peninsula. And then, uh, subhanAllah, the Sahaba, when they saw that, the Munafiqeen, what did they say? He says, look, what happened? They told them, look, look what's happening. The hypocrites, they start saying, look, the people are gathering around you. You should be afraid of that. But what the believers said, said, no, 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 no. That's what Allah and His Messenger promised that this would happen. They told us this was coming. And that's why when they saw it, they realized it was a sign. Like the Prophet Sallallahu when he one day was with the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and as they were eating, and everybody's taking a piece from here and there, what did he say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? قَالْ تُوشِكُمْ The time is coming very soon that the whole, all nations will, will come, kind of gather around you. Will they all gonna basically kind of gather against you? Just like these people, as they eat from every piece from that qas'a, from the dish, this is what's going to happen. And the Sahaba, they're like, Ya Rasulullah, is that going to be because we're not going to be that many? Like we're so, in terms of size, we're so small that everybody's going to take advantage of us? He goes, no, no, no. Balantum kathir. You're so many. Walakinnakum ghutha, ka ghutha is sayl. But in terms of weight, in terms of value, like the foam on top of the, 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 the surface of the ocean. What's the value of that? Nothing. Any weight for this? Absolutely not. The waves takes it on and off and just goes on the shore and disappears. Same or similar thing. There is no strength. There is no power. It's not attached to each other. It's not strong enough. So that's the same thing when the Sahaba, when they heard from the Prophet that was coming and they saw that, what did they say? قَالُوا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ This is what Allah has promised. This was the Messenger promised. وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And Allah and the Messenger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the truth. The Prophet says the truth. وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِيمَانًا وَتَسْلِيمًا That increased them in Iman. They put trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتَسْلِيمًا Submission to Allah azza wa jalla. Because they knew this was coming. In the other ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَّذِينَ قَالَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَاخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Those whom when they told them, the others they told them, listen, the people are gathering against you right now. They're congregating against you. You should be afraid of that. They said, no. قَالُوا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُ This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised will be happening. And this increased them in Iman. وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ Our Allah will suffice us against these people. وَمَا زَادَهُمْ Same thing, زَادَهُمْ إِيمَانُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after, وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ They said Allah is sufficient for us and He is نِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ The best reliance. Which means we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah rewarding them, He said subhanahu wa ta'ala فَانْقَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ So they return back home, return back their places to their houses with their 
بنعمه من الله with a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala victory a great blessing from Allah azza wa jal peace and tranquility so they won wa fadlan lam yamsasum su they won't be touched by any harm Allah protected them subhanahu wa ta'ala wa tabau ridwan Allah and they followed the ridwan of Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with their path wallahu dhu fadlan azim and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he bestows upon them great favor and great blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa tawakkal ala al-hayy alladhi la yamut put your trust in in the one who is everlasting who is always alive he's eternal who never dies who is that jama'a Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this ayah is an unbelievable ayah this ayah destroys all believes in shrines all believes in in graves all believes in saints powers that you know after death and all that stuff it destroys all of that how is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayah وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتِ Put your trust on the one who is eternal, who never dies. Right? So Allah says, put your trust on the one who is eternal, everlasting, who never dies. What does that mean? The one who is not eternal, the one who is alive, but possibly will die, don't put too much trust on them. Right? What about the one who is already dead? Can you imagine now the sequence of this? Allah says, فَتَوَكَّعَ الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتِ You put your trust in the one who never dies. The one who's always alive, who's eternal, never dies, subhanahu wa ta'ala, immortal, لا يموت. So again, we remember. So that means the one who's alive and possibly to die, do not put too much trust on him. So the one who's already dead, do you need to put any trust in that? Absolutely nothing. The one who's already alive and possibly to die, don't, much, don't put too much trust on them. Because they're not going to last long for you. So the one who's dead, are you going to put any trust in them? No. So the trust is always in whom, Jama'ah? In the one who's eternal, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who's always alive and he never dies, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And only on Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. On Allah only. Let those who believe put their trust and their reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal and on Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and Allah Azza wa says فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Someone might ask the question a hadith is going to come explained later inshallah ta'ala Someone might ask the question but okay but how much should I do before I put my trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala what is the role of my actions in this then so why then just kind of submit and say alhamdulillah I'll put my trust in Allah Azza wa Jal and if I do that, Allah will guarantee me, inshallah ta'ala, gold will be, plant, will be growing in, in the backyard of my house. No, this is not going to happen. In Jannah probably, but in dunya, I don't think so. But, uh, so what does it mean? Allah says, فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ The word فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ, which means when you, when, you, when, you, when you intend, or basically when your intention is, is there, خلاص, when you put your intention in the right place, then put your trust in Allah Azza wa Al-Azm over here is actually not just an intention of the heart, it's also that they're taking the action to fulfill that what is that in the heart. So basically making the move to fulfill what you have intended to do. Which means you need to take you need to do your part first and then you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Imam Nawa Rahimullah ibn he said afterwards, Well ayat of Al-Amri bit tawakkul kathira. All the ayat about trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and relying on Allah Azza wa Jal, there's so many. There are so many. And subhanAllah, he mentioned even one ayah, he says, even in the course of something such as talaq. You know, many people, when it comes to family issues, they go through rough time. Sometimes the relationship is not going, you know, the best, the best way, not the best direction. They realize, you know, staying together is going to be very harmful for both of us. And if they have kids, they might be even very damaging, very stressful, subhanAllah, it's not healthy for them, so they separate. But one of the things that keeps, you know, not from separation is not knowing what's happening next. Are we going to survive? Am I going to be able to work? Am I going to find money? This and that. What about my kids? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوْ حَسْبُهُ This is in Talaq, Surah Al-Talaq. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوْ حَسْبُهُ Whoever puts his trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, whoever puts his reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَهُوْ حَسْبُهُ Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of them. Allah will suffice them. Allah will find ways for them. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ 
وإذا تليت عليه عليهم آيات وزارتهم إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون. He said سبحانه وتعالى the true believers are those الذين إذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم when when Allah عز وجل is mentioned their hearts وجلت which means they start trembling they start kind of like shaking mean their hearts soften that's what it means. وإذا تليت عليهم آياته زادتهم إيمانا and when the ayat of Allah عز وجل being recited for them it would increase their iman. You know, Wallah Jama'ah, this ayah is so scary. It's so scary, specific in this time of ours. Because, you know, how much we're attached to the dunya? It's not like in the past. In the past, people, their work, work hours were different. The kind of lifestyle they led were, has so much a lot with dealing with, the, with Allah's creation. Like you go to the pasture, you go to the field, you deal with the animals, you, you go to the water, to the rivers, you, you deal with the skies. Subhan so there's so much dependence on Allah's creation. And you could see that and you could connect and you could reflect frequently. Today, most of your life is what? Is on the computer, on the internet. Even if you would like to see nature, what do you do? You go to YouTube. If you would like to listen to bird sounds, for example, same thing. You go to some artificial device that you would listen to that stuff, subhanAllah. So we're not connected there. And as a result, we don't have that sense of iman whenever you recite, the, when you hear the ayat of Allah, that your iman increases. Because we're not very connected with Allah's creation. And that's why, subhanAllah, sometimes it's good that you take a break from this dunya and go out in the nature, not worrying about anything. Just go out for some time and... Connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation so you can feel those, those moments inshallah ta'ala. Qala Allah azza wa jal wa ala rabbihim yatawakkaloon and they put all their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they put their dependence and reliance on Allah azza wa jal. So three things. When their hearts, when they hear Allah azza wa jal, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, their hearts are shaken. And when the ayat are recited, same thing, their iman increases. And as a result of all of this, they put their trust and their reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us among those who are always put their trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. Wallahu alam. Any question, Jama'a? Yes. Uh, kind of practical point for Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, when you say that you said Allah Azza wa Jal, 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 you said Allah Azza wa I think we are in the age of, uh, um, yeah, it's overwhelming emotion, I mean, information. You see so much that nothing really is impressive anymore. You see so much atrocities and we don't get affected by that. And I remember one time I was driving, I was riding in New York with some brothers. So in the radio, uh, they mentioned that there was a, an attorney, a lawyer, someone who is supposed to have a, a good lifestyle, wealthy in New York and so on. And they said that he basically, he jumped off uh, uh, Empire State. And for me, coming from Texas, yani, I said, I said wow, Allah Musta'an, why would he do that? And the, and the brothers who were with me, they said, what? I said, a guy just you know, jumped off the, the, the Empire State. Did you just hear the news? He goes, oh, oh, yeah, that's okay. So what do you mean that's okay? So that's, that's, that's every day. I'm like, wow, that happens every single day? SubhanAllah, because they, they are flooded with that. So they get desensitized. The whole event of death is no longer something that will scare them off. For me, coming from different place that we don't hear the news very often, it's like a big deal for us. Today, subhanAllah, you watch the news, it's all atrocities. The massive killing that is happening in Syria, in Iraq, in other places in the Muslim world, in other, the other side of the world as well. All of this, we just now, we only just, you know, watch these, the news and you check something on, on, on social media and the sad part is you like the, the, yeah, the video even. And then that's it. That's all what you could do. Share it with other people, spread the news and there is no really effect on ourselves. Sometimes you watch some videos that speak about people going into, into starvation, Allah Musta'an, and you're watching it while you're drinking your cup of coffee or eating your breakfast. And all what you do is just shake in your head and just la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And you move on with your life. It's over flooded. And that's why it's very healthy for a person to take a break. To go and connect with nature. The least you could do, Jama'ah, is at night. When everybody is sleeping and everybody is just quiet. Just get up. Get up, you know, for a half an hour before Fajr time and just make some dua. Pray to Raka'ah. Kind of reflect on the, on the serenity of the event of the night. 
That is by itself is a ni'mah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wallahu Alameen. خير إن شاء الله سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته